thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today I was reading in the book of Job, Job chapter 11, where now we have one of Job's friends by the name of Zophar coming with his advice. And as I said before, these friends of Job are bringing some truth with lies as he's suffering. And as I remind ourselves, even a broken clock could give the right time twice a day. <clears throat> so sometimes in life, people can give us good advice with bad advice and no different here with Job's friends. But one of the things that Job's friend Zophar says that is true in Job chapter 11 and in verse 11 is that our sins are exposed by God. There's an old saying I remember when I was younger, I did some boxing and karate when I was younger and you would get in the ring with somebody and if that person had a big punch, could hit hard, you would try to move around that person. And it was a call, it was a phrase we used to say, you could run, but you can't hide. Oftentimes in life, we too, as Christians, or especially unbelievers, we try to run from God with our sins. I remember when I was younger, running around in the streets as a teenager, we used to have beepers before there were cell phones. And we would have these codes on our beeper when we were up to no good, you know, we didn't want nobody to know where we were or what we were up to. Same thing like if we were with a woman or a girl uh, dating somebody and we didn't want our parents to know we were with that girl, what we were doing with her, we would try to run to a hotel or in a car. And although you could run from your parents and maybe keep things from them, you can't keep things from God. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 tells us, that the eyes of God are everywhere. We are exposed to him. Psalm chapter 90, verse 8. Even our secret sins, you know, we all try to keep secret things in our own lives, in our closet, are exposed by God. He sees everything. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9 says, there's, no, there's nothing new under the sun. From the beginning of time, this has been the story of man. Since our first parents, Adam and Eve, in Genesis chapter 3. In verse 6, we are told they sinned against God. And then verses 7 to 13, you can read there for yourselves. The two things they did after they sinned against God are the same things we still do today. Monkey see, monkey do. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. As our first parents sinned against God in the Garden of Eden, what they did was they tried to cover themselves with fig leaves and hide from the presence of God. Don't we do the same thing at times? That's our impulse, that's our convictions, the way we are. When we sin against God, we try to cover ourselves with certain fig leaves. Maybe not literally, but we do that in a sense, metaphorically. We try to cover our sins. We try to run from the presence of God. My friends, you can run, but you cannot hide. It is better to confess your sins to God. Now, when we confess our sins to God, he is faithful and true to forgive us. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 tells us that. However, God will discipline us. Job chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Psalm 94, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 to 11. I encourage you to read those scripture verses where it speaks about how God disciplines us. He doesn't punish us. He doesn't come down on us with a belt strap, with a hammer and a chisel. But he will discipline us. He disciplines us so that we don't go astray. Just like an earthly parent will discipline their child when they're going astray because they love them. They don't want to go down that path. I've been working with troubled children now for nearly 30 years. And I can tell you one of the reasons why we're in the predicament we are as a culture is because parents want to be their kid's buddy. They want to be their friend. They want to ignore them. They just want them out of their hair. My friends, that's why so many kids are going down the path they're going down because they haven't gotten the proper discipline. But God will not do that with us as his children. God will discipline us and he will do it in love. The second thing Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden when they sinned against God was they started to blame everyone but themselves. The devil made me do it. The wife you gave me. My friends, today, we live in a culture here in America, especially where everybody is a victim of somebody else. Everybody wants retribution for the sins of the past, of other people's sins. 
I can remember times going to courthouses with kids when they would get arrested and have to go as um, part of a security team with them when they would go to the courthouse and listening to these kids who committed a crime and they would blame the judge, the police officer, the social worker, their mother, their father, racist system. And I'm not saying these things don't exist and could be part of the problem, but ultimately we have to take personal responsibility for our own actions. I learned this in the 12-step program. I remember when I was in the 12 steps for drugs and alcohol uh, recovery. One of the first steps in recovery is admitting you have a problem. Not your mother, not your father, not the drug dealer, not the bartender in the bar. You have the problem. My friends, that is one thing I have learned as a Christian following Christ in my Bible, in the Bible reading and prayer and fellowshipping and drawing closer to God and my relationship with God is that we are personally responsible for our own sins and our own actions. There are no innocent victims in life, my friends. We all sin, fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, verse 23. The wages of sin is death, we are told in Romans 6, 23. This is what we are by nature, sinners. So my friends, we need to remember there was only one innocent victim that walked this earth and he died on a cross 2,000 years ago on the hills of Calvary and his name is Jesus Christ. I hope today's devotional video, my friends, will encourage us all to remember that despite the fact that we are, yes, exposed to our sins before a holy God, there is forgiveness through Jesus Christ. But that coming to Christ is going to come with a cost. Our Lord and Savior Christ himself told us in Matthew chapter 19, verse 29 and 30, that when we come to him, we might lose close relationships with others. We might lose materialistic gain in this world. We might have to forsake things here for the kingdom's sake. But Christ said, those who are last will be first and those that are first will be last. Let us look to heaven. Let us look to the rewards that await us in heaven. Not so much on the pain and suffering and the sacrifices we might have to go through here on earth. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 tells us, If anyone lives a godly life in Christ Jesus, they will suffer persecution. Christ himself said in John chapter 16, verse 33, In this world you will have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today, Lord. I pray that we all would count the cost of what it means to be a follower of Christ. Lord, for all those who have suffered, and I know I have, we all have in our past, may we take personal responsibility for our own sins. May we remember that everything we've done is exposed before you, Lord God. We can run, but we can't hide from you. May we confess our sins, repent of them, by the power and person work of the Holy Spirit. God bless you all today, my friends.